Hello everyone, so I made it back to Scotland in one piece. If you watched the last few videos, you'll know the dramas that happened during my trip to France and also the terrible seasickness I had on my journey back from Amsterdam to Newcastle. I've been back in Scotland for a few weeks now, recovering from my dog bite and all the other injuries that I had in, Fr in France. And I'm feeling much better now and starting to look forward to doing more trips in Scotland this year. I've had this van for around eight months now and throughout that time, I've made a few changes here and there with the van. I added a solar panel, which I shared about in a previous video. I put in a portable battery. However, there are a few more small changes that I want to make before I start using this van for more longer trips this year in Scotland. So today I'll be sharing some small DIY projects with you. Let's get started. When I was in France, the sliding door completely stopped working. It was closing, but I'll show you what happened. Okay. The door was closing until around this position, but I couldn't get it closed. And I ended up getting help at a local garage in France and the man there took around 20 minutes and he managed to finally get it shut. And he said to me that it was likely a problem with the bottom runner and he said not to open it again. So the door is, is working smoothly again and I'll show you what they did. So down here on the bottom runner, they put these two bolts and basically raised it up a little bit and that means that it's it's much smoother to run along the bottom and it was actually a different problem to what had happened previously at the end of last year there was another issue with the sliding door but that was actually with the top runner so the previous issue was actually here and it was this piece of metal so at the end of last year they welded a new piece of metal for the runner and that's running really smoothly now but this new issue is with the bottom runner so hopefully now both the top runner and the bottom runner have been repaired this door will have no further issues the next project i'm going to be doing is changing the window covers in the van so last year i shared a video about making the window covers and i was really happy with the design this is how they turned out I have three, one for the back window and then the side window and then the sliding door. There's thermal insulation on the inside and then I put carpet on this side. However, I made these window covers on probably what was the hottest day of the year last year in the UK in June. And because of that, the thermal insulation had expanded. So when it came to the colder months, it basically got smaller and there's a gap of around two three two to three centimeters on each side and the reason i have these is for privacy and people can see in and because i'm staying in the van on my own i want to make sure that the windows are completely blocked out and i'm planning to make these again plus i also want to make some window covers for the front area because sometimes people can see in from that area too i do have curtains between the driver's area and the back of the van, but there are some gaps on the side. So I'm planning if I have extra material left to also make some for the front windows. Another thing with these window covers is because I use them so often, I've probably stayed in the van over a hundred nights now, probably more in the last eight months. And these suctions no longer work. They're falling off all the time. So when I'm sleeping, I wake up and the window covers have fallen off. So I want to replace these suctions as well. So last year, these basically came over to about here. They were completely covering the glass, but as you can see, you can see the gap there. And if someone comes with a torch, they could basically see into the van. And you can see already, look, that suction's fallen off. Um, I do usually wet them before I put them on, but I just placed it on to show you what it looks like. But that's the reason why I want to remake these. I've made this template here. I was looking for a newspaper, but unfortunately there's no newspaper and I don't want to go and buy a newspaper just to make the template. But if I have to, I will. But I've come up with this. I'm going to try and basically make a new cover using this template here. And I've started with the smallest window just in case this doesn't really work. And so I've just marked out there and I'm going to cut the shape. Perfect. 
It does feel a little bit thinner compared to the material I used last time. Maybe that's because it's expanded. I'm not sure. But anyway, I've doubled it up. So I copied the template that I'd made. I'm going to glue these together like I did last time and repeat the process of making these window covers. I'll glue them outside the van because it's quite messy. So it didn't really work cutting out the two templates because it was really hard to get them exactly matching with the glue. So I basically glued one of the templates onto the full sheet and then I'm cutting around it. I think this is what I did last time and it's probably an easier way to do it. Okay, we have a window cover. Let's check if it fits. Okay, let's check the fit. Oh, that's okay. Perfect, so we have one done. After, I'm going to make the rest of the window covers and then I'll carpet them all later at the same time. So I'll move on to the next window next. one here is complete and now just one more. I hope I have enough left of the insulation. These look so good! So all the carpets are on. The last time I made these, I put a black trim around the side. However, I wasn't very happy with it and they all pretty much fell off. It was very fiddly to also attach them. So what I've done this time is right on the edges, I've super glued so that the carpet won't peel off of the insulation. And I'm going to see if it works like this. And later on, if I do want to put the black trim on, I can do that. Excellent. I'm very happy with that. I just need to put the suction pads on next. Much better. That one's fully covered now. I've been working on the back windows and now I'm doing the front windows. This is actually a project I've wanted to do for so long, but I kept putting it off because I thought it wasn't necessary to have them on the front of the vehicle. But I think for insulation and also privacy, it will be good to have these on occasions that I want to use them. So I'll show you what I've done. This has been the most difficult template that I've made because it's so big. So as you can see there, I've made the newspaper template for the front windscreen <laughs> and I think I'm going to have to attach two pieces of the thermal insulation here because one strip is too short. Uh, I will show you what I mean by that now. I next have this aluminium tape and basically this isn't long enough to fit the length of the windscreen. I'm going to connect two together, then I'll make the outline of the template. I don't know if I'll be able to double up on this one, but I'll try my best to do so. Now, hopefully this fits. I actually think this is okay. It's not, not ideal, not perfect, but I think it does the job especially for privacy. So this pretty much fits perfectly into the front windscreen. However, I do have two things that I like to have on my front windscreen. One is for my phone and another one I use for when I'm filming videos. So I'd like to avoid taking those off because when you do take those suction devices off and on the windscreen, they lose the suction over time. So I'd like to create a hole inside this if possible. I've cut a line here for one of them. 
um, but the other one is in the middle. So the middle one's easier to take on and off. I might do something with that. Now I'm going to try and double this up. I don't have much of the insulation material left, so I might just sort of do different patches and try and cover it as much as possible so it's double insulated and it becomes much stronger. <laughs> Here's what it looks like, I turned this chair around, but I'm not sure whether to put the carpeted side on the outside or the inside. It looks better like this from the outside, less obvious, but I'm a little bit worried about the condensation on the windows. And there's the front one, and I just cut a little corner out for the phone holder there, and then this is what it looks like on this side. I think I'll be much more likely to actually use this swivel chair uh, when I have these curtains because I've not really used it too much to be honest because I always feel like people can see in because I don't have any privacy in this front area so now that I've got these covers it might encourage me to to use them. I'll show you outside what it looks like. So that's it with the carpet on the outside there and on the front side here you can see the silver is really, really obvious. I might look at getting some spray paint to spray it black. I'm just not sure how well the paint will hold on this material, especially on the aluminium tape as well. I also think if I put the carpet on the inside of this, because it's at an angle, the suctions might struggle to hold it up and then it'll just start falling down. So I might not carpet this front one but I have carpeted all the other ones. The carpet is just for looks really on the inside it looks really nice. But as you can see like here on the front here it's so obvious that it's a camper van it doesn't look discreet at all. Now I'm going to make some holes for these so I can swap the direction of these around if I do decide to put the carpet on the outside. I'll set them up to do it with the silver on the outside for now. One done. So these are really easy to use. Inside there's that and then you just screw it on. Really simple. Then the part you want to stick to the window will go on that side. Now I'm going to put the suction cups onto the windscreen one. I've now attached so many suction cups. One, two, Actually, one of them I put on the wrong way up there. I don't know if you can see it. I need to change that one around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in total. So I'll attach that and hopefully it will stay up. This is the front window screen cover. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. And although it's taken a lot of time, it's been worth it. I don't think I'll use it every single night I'm in the van, just on occasions that I want some extra privacy or a bit cold and I want some extra insulation. I definitely think having this front window cover will encourage me to use the rotating chair here for the passenger seat. Now the window covers are complete. I always find making those window covers quite a time consuming job. So I'm really happy I've managed to finish those. And next I'm going to be replacing the lethal handles on the cabinets here. So if you've watched some of my previous videos, you will know that I've sustained injuries from these handles. They're knives and forks and spoons. They look really nice, but they are not practical at all. And I recently cut my leg quite badly on the fork. So I have been searching online to try and find replacement handles. I was looking at maybe some wooden handles, but then I came across some soft leather handles, which I thought would be perfect because if I knock into them, they're soft, they're not going to injure me. And also the measurement is quite similar to the holes that are there now. I might have to drill another hole, um, but I think these will work. So I'm planning to attach these. I bought these on Etsy from a business in the UK. So yeah, hopefully these will work. There are quite a few different colors available and I really like the tan colored ones, but I didn't think that they would match the interior of the van very well. So I decided to go for black because the cooktop here is also black. So hopefully they'll look okay. 
here we go. <laughs> Might use this for my cereal. You know, the one thing I like when you order from small business or handmade items is you get a lovely personalized message. Just feels much more personal. These screws are quite long, so hopefully, okay. I think they might be the same size as the ones I just took out actually. Yeah, they're pretty much the exact same size. So I guess it doesn't really matter which ones I use. This is what it's going to look like. So I can see that the hole, we need to drill a little hole there. So there was an option to buy shorter ones, but I thought then you would see this hole. So I went for ones slightly longer just so that I could drill a second hole. And then I also opted to have this leather piece here so that it would cover the hole and you can't see it. But I think this looks quite nice. And also I know some people are watching from Australia. So I used to live in Australia and I love Vegemite. And anyway, in Aldi in the UK, they started selling this, which is basically Vegemite. So avocado on toast with this is so good. So I've got two of the handles attached. I think the black looks really good actually. So there is a little bit of a <laughs> gap here, but it's fine. So I had to drill another hole, but these look amazing and they're so soft. I'm really, really happy with those. One more handle complete. That looks really good. Oh, I need to put the cutlery thing back in. Fantastic. Okay, next one. All the handles are attached and I'm very happy with them. They look really good and easy to open and close the cupboard. They're really soft. So I actually bought this drill as a Christmas present to myself at the end of last year. It's not the most powerful drill, but it will do the job. It's a black and decker one. I just need it for simple jobs here in the van. I've mentioned about it a few times before that I'd been considering updating the electrical system in the van to a proper 12 volt electricity system. However, over the last few months, I've really been thinking about it and I've decided to stick with the Bluetti AC200 Max as my main power source in the van. The AC200 Max is a 2048 watt hour battery and it's really powerful. I use it to power everything in my van such as my hair dryer which uses 1500 watts, my diesel heater, my Starlink internet and I charge all my devices like my laptop, drone and cameras. Even today when we've been doing the DIY, I've been using the Bluetti to charge my batteries for the drill. I feel like installing a proper 12 volt electricity system is quite a big financial investment and also a risk since this fan is already over 20 years old. I'm a really huge fan of Bluetti batteries and this has been a complete game changer for my van travels. I'd like to thank Bluetti for sponsoring this video today and continuously supporting the channel. Bluetti currently has a spring sale and the AC200 Max is on offer for £1,299, which is £500 off its recommended retail price. You can check out the link below if you're interested to find out more. Now, let's get the new water pump installed. The next DIY project I'm going to be doing is regarding the water pump inside the van. So in order to power the current water pump, it's a 12 volt water pump, I need to have the key in the ignition and it provides some 12 volt power, which then operates the water pump. However, there was a situation last year where I was brushing my teeth at the end of the night I forgot to take the key out of the ignition after using the tap and when I woke up in the morning the van was dead and I couldn't start the van and I had to get someone to help me jump start the vehicle. I feel like there is a high risk of this happening again and I shared about this in a video last year where I reviewed my van after six months and many of you left very helpful suggestions so thank you so much for that. There were quite a few suggestions to change the water pump over to a foot pump and also there were some suggestions to connect the 12 volt 
to the Bluetti. However, I've decided to go with the foot pump. I think the foot pump is a great idea because it also means I can control the water as well. So I only have a 10 litre tank underneath the sink and the water can run out quite quickly, especially when I'm doing the dishes or if I'm washing my face or brushing my teeth. Um, it's hard to control the pressure of the water. So by using the foot pump, I will get around the issue of having to put the key in the ignition and hopefully the water will be able to last longer as well. I'm going to try and install this now and also remove the 12 volt water pump. I will show you the current situation. This is the water tank that I have here and you can see the pump there, it's actually submerged inside the 10 litre water tank. However, if I want to put the foot pump, I think I'm going to install the foot pump here. I was storing some items here like the vinegar and some other washing up liquid and things but I can store them up there on that back shelf and then I can put the water pump here. So I have removed the 12 volt water pump, that's what it looked like. So obviously that pump there, that thing there, was inside the water, submerged in the water. You can see here the wires and they are connected to the 12 volts of the vehicle and when the ignition is on that will provide power along this cable here. So I actually I'm quite a fan of this very simple water and plumbing system. If you're looking to build a van I would suggest doing something like this if, you're don't, if you don't need hot water and you don't want to attach the water tanks under the vehicle. When we did the bus conversion in Japan it was a very complicated plumbing system with a combi boiler and there was a 200 litre fresh water tank I think and 100 litre grey water tank under the vehicle. So this is a really nice and simple setup if you just need a basic water system and you don't need huge amounts of water and you don't need the hot water as well. So I've got this new pipe here however it's not, not very flexible so I'm going to just try and make it a bit more flexible and then I'm going to cut it so that it might be okay actually but I need to make sure it can suck all the water. I'm going to attach this here. I did get some of these um, clamps as well. It was a bit of a wrestling match, but I managed to get them in. I've cut the pipes, attached it like this, and I just put the grey water tank back in just to make sure there's enough space, but this looks perfect. And I've also tested it to make sure they're connected on the right um, outputs and inputs there, and there's water coming. So I'm going to drill this in now, and that'll hopefully be it. Okay, so I've managed to get the water pump in. Now I'm going to give it a test and see if we can get any water coming out. So first I'll have to turn it on, push it with my leg. Oh yes, there's a little bit of water coming out. Oh, it's so easy to control. The foot pump is now installed and it's operational. It's obviously not as convenient as before when I just had to turn on the tap, but I'm pretty happy with it. You just basically need to stand here, push it, and then I can get the water. So if I want to wash my face, I can just go like this or brush my teeth and it probably looks a bit awkward but actually I think it'll be fine and if it is really horrible and I'm not enjoying it then I'll go back to this pump and then I might look at doing a 12 volt wire around to the Bluetti but the water coming out of that is really minimal compared to when it's got the 12 volt pump because it's so much more powerful. So that job is complete, now time to remove and detach the this one here. So. Next, I want to show you some shelves that I installed recently. Some of you might find this solution quite helpful for your own camper van or even in your house possibly, but I've seen a few people in camper vans install these type of shelves. So above the kitchen here, I had this shelf and it's quite a good size to store things on. I usually store food up here. I've got some wine glasses, tea bags, and then on that side, 
I have some books as well. However, before I put these bungee shelves in, uh, things would fall down when I was driving or I'd have to pack them away when I was driving and then only put them there if I was parked up for maybe a night or two. So these bungee cord shelves have been absolutely great. So I bought these bungee cords on eBay. I went for grey because it matches the carpet inside the vehicle. And what I did was I pulled them really tight and then drilled a hole here at the end for it to fit through. And I tied a knot on the inside of the cupboard. And I've been using these for about a month now and they've been absolutely fine. The knots haven't come undone and they've still remained very strong. So I've been really happy with this solution for the bungee shelves and it was a very easy and affordable way to secure the items on the shelves. While I'm in this area, I'll also show you this jacket hook that I installed. So when my friend was in the camper van traveling with me, he was really annoyed that there was no jacket hook. So I put one there and it's actually been really great. All the DIY jobs in the van are done. Now I'm going to set up the toilet ready for my next trip. I want to show you how I'm doing the toilet because I introduced the toilet in a previous video which I will link below if you want to watch more details about the toilet. However, this is a separating toilet. Inside the number two area, I've been using this material called duft blocker and unfortunately this is not available in the UK so I'm looking for an alternative. I've actually had some questions from a few of you asking for alternative compost materials for the number two area so I want to introduce two of them so one is the coconut coir so this is an organic matter made from coconut so this was around six pounds I believe and what you need to do is you mix this with water and make it a little bit damp and then it can be used as the composting material. It does seem a bit cumbersome to use this compared to the duft blocker and also the wood shavings, which I will show you now. This big bag here, this huge big bag, is the wood shavings and I bought this at a local farm shop and it cost around £10. So this is recommended as being a great material to use inside a compost toilet. So I'm going to move some of the material from here into some smaller bags because I can't bring this with me in the camper van. Inside here are the, the wood shavings so it'll be interesting to see how this compares actually. They feel very light. So I'll put some of these into some bags and then store them in the van. Inside the duff blocker, it has something called activated carbon, and that's really good for deodorizing and reducing the smell. There was a lot of comments on my toilet video saying it's unbelievable that the toilet doesn't smell, but actually it doesn't smell. And perhaps it is because of that activated carbon. I can imagine this is probably a bit messier inside the van because there's a, even just now there's a lot flying around. I will set up the toilet with this as well to show you. This is what the toilet looks like. That's just water. Don't worry. Put the bag in here, bin liner, wrap it around the bucket. And then I will put some of this wood shaving stuff in here. Just like that. And then after you've done a number two, you can just put more on top. So that's basically how the toilet works. Okay, I will turn it round. And as you can see, that's what the toilet looks like on the inside. I have prepared all the bags. I'll put some vinegar in the number one area just to help prevent any smells. This Truly No Toilet to this day has been absolutely amazing. I still really, really like it. As I mentioned, I'll leave the link below to the full video where I introduce about this toilet in more detail. It's been absolutely game changing for traveling in the camper van. And the coupon code that I organized through Truly No is still active if anyone does want to buy one you can get 30 pounds or 30 euros worth of free gifts when you buy a toilet. Or if you're in the USA, you can get $40 discount when you buy a toilet. So I'll leave more information about that below. I'm gonna put this in the van now and I will see you in the next video when I'm hitting the road and we're going to be seeing more of Scotland. See you then.